In this video, we're going to look at assembly language and sort of build our vocabulary. Like learning your own language, English, French, whatever it happens to be, we have to understand what each instruction is, but you'll find a similar pattern between all of them. So in this case, if you look at your screen, notice that the very first instruction I do is an add. So the instruction comes first, followed by the parameters to that instruction. If we look at this, we have A0, comma A0, comma A1. And this is what's known as a three address mode. A three address mode, I'm cut off. There we go. In this video, we're gonna talk about MIPS assembly. Assembly, remember, is just instruction after instruction listed in a way where we can accomplish a goal, a task, or whatever it happens to be. And remember that whenever we compile C++, we compile that into assembly. So if you take a look at your screen, we have the add instruction, and the parameters to that add instruction are A0, A0, A1. Now remember, those are what are called registers, and all registers inside MIPS are four bytes or 32 bits and they're prefixed with a dollar sign. So in this case, what we're looking at is the add instruction is going to add two numbers and store a result. This is called three address mode. In three address mode, we have a result register, a first source register, the left-hand side, and then the right-hand side, the second source register. So in this case, what it's going to do is it's going to do A0 plus A1 and store the result into A0. So generally, most instructions are gonna look like this, like the multiplies, rem, remainder, add, subtract, add i, things like that. We're going to add the two right-hand operands or subtract them or multiply them or divide them and we're going to store the result into the left-hand operand. And we can look at this sort of, let me bring up the whiteboard just to show you what this looks like. So what this looks like is if we do something like add a0, let's do t0 and let's do S0, okay? So this is three address mode once again, and essentially what three address mode means is A0 equals T0 plus S0. So in a three address mode, the A0, the resultant register, does not factor into the sources. It's not part of the source. There is what's called the true two address mode, and most Intel machines use a two address mode. So in Intel, we can do something like this. Now the register names are weird in Intel, so don't let that throw you off, but we have one register called RAX, one register called RDX, okay? And what this does is RAX plus equals RDX. So see the difference there? In C++, remember, if we do a plus equals, that's the same thing as RAX equals RAX plus RDX. And so we're actually using the destination register as a source. That's two address mode. That's actually harder to program because we have to store things in temporary registers so that we actually have the correct information that we want. With a three address mode like we have here in MIPS, A0, T0, S0, we can keep the source operand separate from the destination operand. So to understand assembly, recall that we have essentially three different pieces. We have labels, which end in a colon. We have directives, which start with a dot. And then we have the instructions. And generally what we do is line by line, we add an instruction, add, subtract, multiply, divide, whatever it happens to be. And we run instructions from top to bottom. Now we'll see later on how we can actually jump around and move around inside of a program, like an if statement loops, things like that. But essentially we start like a book. We move upper left and work our way to the bottom right. So in this case, we have to build our vocabulary. So we already talked about the registers in the previous video, so I'm not gonna harp on these again. It's just that these registers can be used for certain things. Now there is a standard out there that says for the A registers, we're going to use those as arguments. So we can have up to four arguments with these registers that we have. We return values in V0 and V1, so unlike C, we can actually have two different return values. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start to differentiate between integer instructions and memory instructions. So the, <clears throat> this is called a load store architecture, RISC, reduced instruction set computer. And in here, we have load and store instructions. So what this means is a load store, Wow, that was awful. Let's do that again. There we go. So a load store means that anytime we use add or something like that, everything has to be inside of registers. 
Now, the Intel machine, we can actually go out to memory and use that as an operand. In the MIPS instruction, we can't, instruction set, we can't do that. So we can't do add T0, A0, and say something like 0x3BFE, and that be a memory address. So what we would want it to do is dereference 3BFE, grab that value, that integer value of there, add it with A0 and store it into T0. Now on an Intel machine, which is CISC, complex instruction set computer, we can do that, but we can't do that inside of MIPS. Instead, with MIPS, we have to do what's called load and store, which makes it actually quite simple for us because we can load and store our, well, I'm sorry, the load and store instructions are how we read and write to memory. So we have load, which starts with an L, and we have store, which starts with an S. Now, what this does is load will actually read from the memory so you give it a memory address and you give it a destination register. So it'll take from memory, store it into a register. Whereas store will take from a register, store it into memory. Now in that, we have to know what size we want to store. Do we want to store one byte? Do we want to store two bytes? Do we want to store four bytes? Now remember the MIPS system that we're using is 32 bits. So we have three different types. So L stands for load and then we put a suffix in there that tells us the size. So LB would be load byte. LW would be load, well, let's just do LH, load half word, and LW stands for word. Now, we have not really covered what word half word actually means, but in this, word is what's called a word size. That is the, the addressable unit inside of the computer. Now, for this, a 32-bit machine, a word is 32 bits. So, let's see if we can figure this out. Load byte is one byte. Load half word is half of a word, so that's 16 bits, two bytes. So a byte is like the char data type inside of C++. Half word is like the short inside of C++, and word is like int. So we can actually specify the size, how much on this, remember all registers are four bytes, but how much of the register do we actually want to store into memory? That is the suffix, B for one byte. And what that's gonna do is just like narrowing and widening for narrowing, we take the lower eight bits and that's what we store in the memory address. Half where we take the lower 16 bits and we, that's what we store into memory. Load word, we take all 32 bits, four bytes of that register and store it in memory. Analogously, we can store byte, store half word, or store word. So let's take a look at what these instructions actually look like and how we can use them. So notice that in store, we're gonna go from a register into a memory address. And so don't confuse this way because generally the destination is on the left-hand side. However, that is not the case for a store, okay? So in this case, we're gonna take the value of T0 then SP, remember that's your stack pointer and that's a memory address. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add eight to the stack pointer and then dereference that memory address and store in that memory address the value T0, whatever's in T0. And so that is store byte, so that's only gonna take the lower eight bits of whatever's in T0. Store half word is gonna take the lower 16 bits of T0, add eight to the stack pointer and store that value in there. Now this can be a negative or positive number. Generally it's zero because we already calculated the memory address and put that inside of a register. But in this case, we can actually hard code in an offset. And that's helpful whenever we use the stack. So load byte, load half word, load word is analogous to the store byte, store half word, store word. And in that case, remember loading means going from memory into the register, whereas store means go from the register into memory. So that is how we actually manipulate memory. All the other instructions that we have will manipulate registers or some sort of a media and a register. And that makes this a fairly straightforward uh, assembly language, ISA, instruction set architecture, because we know, okay, I don't wanna go into memory right now, so I'm not gonna use the load and store. Unlike the Intel machine, which you use the add instruction to actually, or move instruction to actually get information from the memory. So in this case, let's take a look at the common instructions that we have available to us. So add, remember that just adds T1, T2 and stores them into T0. Add I stands for add immediate. So remember an immediate is a small integer that's actually built into the instruction. Each instruction is 32 bits. So it's a big, we generally look at them as hexadecimal numbers. And so we actually encode negative 100 in this case into the instruction itself. So that's what's an immediate. That's why they don't call them literals, they call them immediates because a literal is literally an integer, a char, a short or something like that. 
that. In this case, it's an immediate because it's a part of the instruction encoding. Subtract, multiply, divide, and rem stands for remainder, which is the modulo operation. We also have our logical instructions, shift left logical, SLL. Shift left logical vector, uh, well, it's a value, which is in T0. So notice SLL takes an immediate, whereas SLLV takes three registers. So once again, all these are three address modes. So for SLL, shift left logical, we take T1, shift it left 10 places, and store the result into T0. SRL is shift right logical. SRA is shift right arithmetic. So remember, arithmetic right shift is for signed values, whereas logical right shift is for unsigned values. We have OR, we have XOR, we have AND, we have NOT, and NEG for negative. So NEG will actually do the twos complement. Remember, NOT is the ones complement. We just flip all the ones to zeros and all the zeros to one. Whereas NEG stands for negative, we'll actually do the twos complement in which it flips all the bits and then adds one to it. In fact, you could use them as a pseudo instruction to do just that. So we're not going to cover jumps and branches in this video. We'll do it in another one just, just, just to keep this a smaller video so that we're not doing everything all at once. So the important things to know here is that we want to keep the memory and the integer instructions separate. The memory instructions are your store and your loads, whereas your integer instructions are your add subtract, multiply, divide. Now one thing about loads is, remember we're widening. So remember there were two ways we could widen a value. We could do it using sign extension or we could do it using zero extension. By default, if we use LB, load byte, we're going to take a byte from memory and store it into a 32-bit register. So that's eight bits going into 32-bit, so we have to widen that value. By default, MIPS will sign extend. If we don't want that, we can use the unsigned instructions, LBU, LHU. So that U stands for unsigned, and what it will do is we'll zero extend instead of sign extend. And so that's just a thing you need to keep in, in mind. So the reason we don't use, so notice there's only load byte unsigned and load word unsigned. Or I'm sorry, load half word unsigned. We don't have a load word unsigned because we don't need to, to widen or narrow. And we will do, there's no such thing as store byte unsigned because... We're narrowing, we're not widening, and it's not the same value. So store byte will take a 32-bit value and store only the lower eight bits. So the upper 24 bits get truncated off. So those don't exist. Finally, let's take a look at the instructions here, and then we'll get into a few examples. So once again, the important thing to remember here is that the shifting instructions use a V if we want to use three registers, because generally we don't want the user or the code to tell us how many times. The most common instruction that we're going to have is a shift left or a shift right in which we hard code in the number of places we want to shift left or right. So that's why SLL, SRL, SRA all take an integer whereas SRIV, SRLV, SLLV all take registers. So don't confuse that with the I, the immediate, because V is not really an immediate. It is encoded into the instruction, but there's two separate things. That's why they don't use the I versus the V. Okay, so XOR takes three registers, whereas X or I takes two registers and an immediate. So keep those straight, but you will generally have a cheat sheet. Remember in Mars, you can actually see as you start typing something out, it will give you a list of all the instructions. So I'm gonna stop this video here, and then the next video I'm actually gonna show some examples using loads, stores, adds, subtracts, multiplies, divide, that sort of stuff. So we'll get into Mars, see how that works, that sort of stuff. Thanks for watching.